lunch and get your feet off the couch and get off my chair. Not current affairs show. What? You guys are watching current affairs? There you go again. <sighs> What again? Well, you're always at us that we don't take an interest in important issues, and now that we're doing... All right, all right. I'm wrong. You're right. Say that bit again. <laughs> no. You only ever get that once every 18 years. <laughs> all right, Dad. This current affair stuff's quite interesting. Oh, what's the main story? What's been happening in this big world of ours? Well, did you know that there's this cat in Nebraska who's suckling 11 little piglets? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Well, I don't know that. I mean... It's... They didn't say, but, but maybe the mother pig died. Oh, Deb, this is absolutely earth-shattering. Yeah, and they had this guy at the camel races in Abu Dhabi. He went berserk with a meat cleaver and killed three totally innocent bystanders. Three people? Three camels. <laughs> wow. And then there was this really cute one. Oh, Debbie, how can you get cuter than three dead camels? Dad! All right, I'm sorry. So tell me cute then. Well, there's this Labrador in Scarborough who rides a surfboard and catches frisbees. At the same time? Well, no, but they're working on it. <laughs> I find this totally amazing. Yeah, it is when you think about it. We sit here in our chairs and... Ah, uh, in my chairs. <laughs> yeah. And watch this terrific stuff from every corner of the globe. Globes don't have corners. You know what I mean. Modern technology, it's brilliant. And sometimes we forget it. Yeah, no wonder. What do you mean? Well, what has modern technology told you so far? I'll tell you. It's told you that in a year's time, there's going to be a very disappointed cat in Nebraska because its 11 children won't chase mice. <laughs> oh, come on. No, then we've heard all about this camel killer in Abracadabra. Abu Dacta. Well, so what? You don't know where either of them are. And then finally, there's this poor dog in Scarborough who's going to need a frisbee bypass. <laughs> What's your point? Well, the point is we don't need to know all this. You've just been watching a satellite version of Trivial Pursuit. <laughs> well, this isn't current affairs. This is about as interesting as a current bun. Well, what do you want to know? Well, I want to know about important things. Well, it was important. Who to? To the camel owner. <laughs> he already knows about it. He's got three dead camels to prove it. Uh, uh, Betty, can I have a look at the town hall file, please? Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Hang on. Are you crying? No. Well, gee, your eyes have sprung a terrible leak. Oh, very well, then. I can't hide it. I am crying. Oh, what's the matter, Betty? Well, well, I can't burden you with my problems, Mr. Kelly. Oh, King. yes, of course you can. That's what friends are for, and I'm your friend, aren't I? Are you? Oh, yes. <laughs> of course I am. Well, honey, honey, we never go to lunch or, or shopping or anything. And, and and you never bring me up and for a chat or anything on the phone. Well, of course not. Uh, well, you see, that's because you're here. And we don't need to do that, do we? Oh, no. Oh, well, that's good, isn't it? I just got a friend I never knew I had. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Kelly. You made me feel more better now. Betty. Yes, Mr. Kelly. What was the problem? What problem? Oh, God, woman, you've got the attention span of an avocado pear. A minute ago, you were crying. Oh, yes. Oh, God, what have I done? Well, it's, it's Jocelyn. Is it? Yes. And Dirk. Dirk? Who's Dirk? Dirk's Jocelyn's childhood sweetheart. And they grew up together and they've always been in love and they're going to get married and... <sighs> Until Ali came along. Ali? Yeah, Ali Ben Yusuf. He's an Arab. Well, I didn't think he'd be an Irishman. <laughs> yeah, and he swept her off her feet with his exotic charm and swarthy good looks. Oh, he's dark, is he? Yeah. Well, there's the problem. Doesn't she know that young girls should stay away from dark alleys? <laughs> yeah, well, she was lonely and bored, and she didn't realise that he'd wanted to go back with him. Back? Back where? Back to darkest Arabia. See, his father died, and, and, and now he's the prince of the bed of wish. Prince, Betty. You know a prince? Yeah, all well, sort of. Only through Jocelyn. Well, I've never ever heard about this before. When when did all this happen? Um, in chapter three. <laughs> Chap chapter three? Yeah. 
of the tormenting sands. Oh. <laughs> Betty, you've been talking about some trashy romance novel. No, I'm talking about the tormenting sands. Oh, I might have known it. Nobody in the world knows people named Jocelyn and Dirk and Ben Yusuf, the dark alley. <laughs> Just like real people. Oh, how can they be like real people in, in the Aching Heart series for people who dare to love? Tell me, Betty, do you dare to love? <laughs> oh, no. But I, I just like good literature. Good literature? This is rubbish. It'll rot your brain. <laughs> Woman's mad. <laughs> good literature. <laughs> Hi, Deb. What are you doing? I'm just finishing these sketches I did last week. Ah, the nude female figure. That's good, Deb. Yeah, well, it's not really mine. I copied it from a book. Yeah, well, it's still good, though. Yeah, well, next week's not going to be so easy. I've got to find a live model. Female? No. Male? <laughs> yeah. You mean a nude male man? <laughs> no, Dad, a nude male wombat. <laughs> Dad, well, you're not going to draw a nude male man with his clothes off. Well, it'd be a bit hard to draw a nude male man with his clothes off. <laughs> Just use your imagination. That's what artists are supposed to do anyway. Dad, you're being approved. I am not. But you can't ask someone you don't know to take off their clothes. Well, I'm not going to. I'm going to ask Rex. Rex? Who Rex? You know, Rex. Oh, you mean Rex has been taking you out, Rex? That Rex? Yes, that Rex. No, not that Rex. <laughs> Why not? Because you know him. So I can't ask someone I don't know, and I can't ask someone that I do know. I mean, that doesn't give me a lot of choice, you know. I know. Dad, look, I'm an artist first and a woman second. To me, it'll mean nothing. Deborah, he's a boy first and an animal second. <laughs> To him, it'll mean everything. Oh, no, well, listen, have you asked him yet? No. Oh, well, there's no need to worry about it then. Why not? Well, he won't do it, will he? Why not? Well, you know, I mean, a boy his age would be too embarrassed. I know I would have been. Oh, no. Julie says he's always ready to drop him. <laughs> drop him? Drop him? Uh, drop whatever he's doing and help me out. As long as it's for art. See you later, Dad. Oh, no. Just, hey, just a minute. Just a minute. He's not an Arab prince, is he? No, he's a Presbyterian. <laughs> what do you want about Arabs? Oh, I don't know. I just get this funny feeling that someone's emptied a tin of Arabs into my life. <laughs> now, let's see. Five across. Establishment. Oh, that's easy. Oh, Jen, what are you doing? I'm preparing for my role in life. Ah, oh, planning to be a housewife. No, I'm planning to be a microsurgeon. Well, what's all this cleaning got to do with being a microsurgeon? Well, I'm going to be a married one, and everyone knows men are lazy. Oh, are they? Yeah, they sit around on the couch doing nothing. Well, I'm not doing nothing, I'm doing the crossword. Can I help? Yeah, why not? Uh, what's a seven-letter word for a large African animal, starting with G? Grasshopper. It's not a large animal. Yes, it is. You should have seen the size of the one Fred Stenner put in my lunchbox. Oh. Well, it's not African. They've got grasshoppers in Africa. Oh, yeah, but this one's got to have seven letters. And grasshoppers got uh, lots and lots. Gee, you're so picky. <laughs> Hi, Dad. Uh, you'll be relieved to know that I'm not asking Rex to pose for me. Oh, uh, you realised I was right. No, I realised he was going away for the weekend. <laughs> well, I suppose it's for the best, Deb. You don't want to ask someone that you're romantically involved with. Dad. Him. Well, you will be. When? Five seconds after he takes his clothes off. <laughs> no, no, no. You, sh you should ask someone who's a friend, but, but someone who's not romantic. Like who? Well, I don't know. We need to find someone who's got all the charm and romance of a cattle grid. <laughs> oh, do we know anyone like that? Oh, Debbie, I'm Mr. Kelly. <laughs> oh, well, thanks for the dinner, Mr. Kelly. My pleasure, Nudge. Oh, by the way, Deb, have you asked him? Asked him? Yeah, yeah you know about it. Oh, no, I haven't asked him yet. Ask me what? Well, go on, Deb. Ask him. Yeah, yeah, go on, Deb. Ask me. <laughs> What's she going to ask me? Well, I don't know. What's she going to ask me? Don't ask me. Me, Deb's doing the asking. Well, not so far, she's not.
if she's going to ask no. <laughs> what she's going to ask me. And I've asked you. The only one who hasn't asked anyone anything is Debbie. Now, why not? Oh, don't ask me. Deb, ask him. I can't stand the suspense. <laughs> Hello, miss. What are you up to? Chapter four. Chapter four? Of a book? Goodness me, Jen. Don't tell me you're actually reading. Yeah, it's good, Dad. But there's a perfectly good television set over there in the corner. Or have you broken it? <laughs> no, Dad, I'm reading. It's good for my brain. You're always telling me that television stopped if I to break. Yeah, but I don't expect you to believe it. <laughs> anyway, what's the story about? Fantastic Mr. Fox? Gumnut twins and the big bad Banksia man? What is a Banksia man anyway? I never met one. None of the above. So, what's it about? It's about Dirk and Jocelyn, this terrific character. <laughs> You're reading that? That's terrible. No, it's really good. Jocelyn has to decide whether to marry Dirk or run away with Ali the Arab. Yeah, yeah, I know what it's about. I've been through it all with Betty. Now give it to me. Oh, Dad! No! I never thought I'd say this, but I'd rather you watch television. It's not fair. Well, no one ever said it was supposed to be. Well, can I finish the tormenting sense later on? Yeah. When? When you're 20. <laughs> oh, I'm your friend now. Come on, Deb. What is it you want to ask me? Well, it's a bit of a favour, Nudge, and you probably won't want to do it. Yes, he will. What? Yeah. What's it got to do with you? Well, I'm sick of all of this dithering around. Now, what is it he's just agreed to do? Yeah, what is it that I've agreed to do? Well? Well, get on with it. Well, look, I need someone to pose for a sketching session. Well, you got him. What are you worried about? Simon, I'm asking Nudge, not you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what he's like. He'll dither around trying to make his mind up. Yeah. <laughs> well? Oh, yeah. You know how indecisive you are, mate. Indecisive? Me? I am not. <laughs> oh, well, I suppose I could be at times. <laughs> but, uh, I, I, on the other hand, sometimes I'm quite decisive. I think. <laughs> See what I mean? It's quicker this way. You get an answer without all the dithering. Oh, on the first hand, I'll... Oh, just do it. All right. Well, what position do you want me in? <laughs> I suppose. How about this? This way. This way you can get my bicep. Everyone, everyone says they're my best feature. Well, look, Nudge, I think you'll be needing a bit more than your biceps. Oh, great. Well, then you can get my tricep. <laughs> there, there, I'm almost as good. <laughs> Birds go mad over my triceps, mate. Uh, listen, we'll need a bit more than your triceps too, Nudge. Well, how much more? A lot more. <laughs> Quite a lot more. Everything more. You mean everything? Everything? You've <laughs> got to be joking. No way. Well, stay out of it. This is between Nudge and me. That's what I'm worried about. <laughs> Dad, did you know Dibby wants Nudge to pose in the nude? Yeah, can I watch? <laughs> that sounds even better than Dirk and Jocelyn. Jennifer, go to your room. Dad? Go. Oh, right. Now, look. So in the nude, Dad. That means without any clothes. She wants him to pose without any clothes. Naked. In the buff. Bears. So, I think we finally established what naked means, thank you. Well, we got to stop him. What for? Because it's... it's disgusting. And she's my sister. And she shouldn't be seeing a nude man, let alone him. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not going to do it. Oh, come on, Nudge. Look, I really need someone for this. Look, remember when we were three years old? Dad used to bath us in that tin tub together. <laughs> Yeah, but things have changed since then. That's right. Attitudes have changed. Uh, Behaviour patterns have changed. Well, they weren't exactly the things I was thinking about. <laughs> oh, come on, Nudge. Look, everyone knows these days that the naked body is nothing to be ashamed of. Nudge is this. <laughs> and, Dad, make us stop saying that. Saying what? You know, naked. <laughs> Simon, don't be a prude. I mean, Deb's right. After all, it's only for art. Surely you trust her. Well, of course I do, but people might get the wrong idea. I've got it. How about if I wore a pair of Speedos? <laughs> speedos? Did Michelangelo's David wear Speedos? Did, did Rodan's thinker wear Speedos? Uh, who's Rodan's thinker? She's been drawing some thinker in the nude too, Dad. <laughs> oh, Simon, Rodan's thinker is a famous nude sculpture of a man in a classic pose like this. He's thinking. Yeah, and I better know what he was thinking. <laughs> what? He was thinking, I wonder where I left my speedos. <laughs> Good morning.
morning, Betty. Oh, have you lost something? Yes, Mr. Kelly, I left my tormenting sounds here, so have you seen it? Yes, as a matter of fact, I have. Oh. I caught Jenny reading it last night. <gasps> oh, no, is she all right? <laughs> yes, of course she's all right. Don't panic, Mr. Kelly. Uh, I'll ring Father Maloney. Father Maloney? What for? Well, he can give her absentolution. <laughs> you mean absolution? No, no, absentolution. If he gives you one, you can't make it there in person. <laughs> no, Betty, Betty, she doesn't need absolution. Oh, oh, yes, she does, Mr. Kelly. Her brain needs disinfecting. This is hot stuff. But the bookseller hands it to you with a pair of tongs, does he? <laughs> Mr. Kelly, it's not funny. I mean, this stuff is dynamite for a ten-year-old mind. Well, you're reading it. <laughs> yes, but I'm a sophisticated woman of the city now. Oh, are you? Yeah. I know a Swedish post person and everything. <laughs> you know, I can handle it. Look, Betty, the only thing that worries me is that those things are trash. I'd much prefer Jenny to read good books. And you too, for that matter. Well, I don't know any good books. Well, here, read this. You'll love it. What is it? Tolstoy. Oh, look, I don't want to read a kid's book. <laughs> it's not a kid's book. Yes, it is. Tolstoy. They make those big metal toy trucks, don't they? Look, <laughs> well, Clyde Purvis had a whole collection of them in Walgett. He used to play with them in the sandpit. And he reckoned they were unbreakable, but I showed him. <laughs> Betty, Betty, oh, it's it. not Toltoy, it's Tolstoy. Oh, is that his brother? <laughs> It's Leo Tolstoy from Russia. Oh, well, I'm not reading any Russian book. I mean, Father Maloney reckons they're all godless communists. Oh, oh, Betty, this was written before they invented communists. It's war and peace. Oh, what's it about? <laughs> it's about Napoleon's war with Russia. Oh, who won? Oh, no, 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 don't tell me. I like surprise endings. <laughs> There's a Himalayan yak learning to ride a surfboard. Oh, what are you watching? Sesame Street? No, it's the news. Oh, I might have known it. These days there's more hard news on Sesame Street. All right, I thought about it. I'll do it. But I still don't approve. Oh, shut up, Simon. Good on you, Nudge. Hey, Nudge, are you going to pose in the buff while Debbie draws you? Jennifer, leave the room. No, I'm allowed. Leave the room. That make leave the room. Jenny, leave the room. Oh, rats! <laughs> So, Nudge, you're going to pose speedoless. Well, Mr. Kelly, I look at it this way. It's for Debbie, it's for Ron. And it's for 50 bucks. <laughs> you're paying him? Well, it's a standard modelling fee. Yeah, 50 bucks is good money, Mr. Kelly. Besides, when you share the tin bath together, it gives you a special bond. Yeah, it does. It's only Debbie, after all, not a bunch of strangers. Oh, didn't I mention that, Nudge? Mention what? Well, it's not just for me, it's for the whole class. <laughs> How many? Uh, 30. How many girls? 30. Oh. Forget it, I'm not standing around buffo in front of 29 people I've never been in the bathtub with. <laughs> all right, this has gone on far enough. Uh, Simon, no, just Dad, a minute. You all know my feelings on this. I'm putting my foot down. Nudge is not posing. Well, that's a relief. <laughs> I am. I'm not having my big brother punch around in the buffer in front of my friends. Yeah, but don't be a prude. Oh. Listen, Simon, what brought on this change of heart? Well, Dad, it's for art. And besides, for some of these girls, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Some of these girls? Only some of these girls? Well, maybe some of them will need revision. <laughs> Well, hello, your father's daughter, Jenny. Hi, Jen. How are you? How was your day? Why do I bother? Hi, Dad. I'm well. Not bad. I don't know. Good. I'm glad we've got that settled. Now, dear, what did you want? Now, you've got to tell me what happens. I've been burned with curiosity all day. You feel all right to me. That was a figure of speech, Betty. Oh, was it? Well, well now, what did you want tonight? Betty, you've got to tell me what happens to Jocelyn. Does she run off to the desert in a life of untrampled passion? Oh, Jenny, 
Whatever that means. <laughs> oh, she married boring old Dirk. Now, darling, um, this book is a little too um, adult for you, you know. It's rubbish. I don't want all the gory details. I just want to know what happens. Well, I don't know, darling, because I haven't finished it. Because your father took it away. <laughs> oh, what? I reckon she should marry Ali and it'd be real mega living in a tent. <laughs> oh, no. I think she should marry Dirt. She should be true to her first love. Nah, he's a boring old goody-goody. Ali is really exciting. True, but Dirk is steadfast and solid as a rock. No, I want to... Oh, for Pete's sake, she marries Benjamin. Benjamin? Where's <laughs> Benjamin? He's the handsome, windblown quantity surveyor she meets in Chapter 7. <laughs> You have been reading my tormenting sand, that trashy load of rubbish. Well, a bit. <laughs> Maybe I just glanced at it. You just glanced at it for seven chapters? <laughs> well, all right. I read the whole thing. Mr. Kelly, you're a hypocrite. I am not. I just wanted to find out for myself how trashy it was. <laughs> Betty, you don't have any more you could lend me, do you? <laughs> Sketching go. Uh, did, did Simon pose or Nudge? No, I wouldn't let Simon pose. Nudge finally agreed. Oh, uh, gee, I bet he was nervous. Yeah, well, he did say he wanted a modesty shield. He kept asking for props to hold on to. Props? <laughs> like what? Well, it started off with a garbage tin lid, then it was a briefcase, and then we finally agreed to let him hold a daisy. <laughs> <laughs> a daisy? That wouldn't cover much. Yeah, well, that's what I thought. But, you know the old saying, Dad? Modesty is the mother of invention. recorded in front of a live audience. Hey Dad is a Gary Riley production for the Australian Television Network. Out of me. Yeah, and you frightened the tribes out of the whole street. Oh, well, I am sorry, Deborah. What would you do if you woke up and there was a big, ugly, hairy face inches from yours? I'd say, don't touch me, I'm only the bridesmaid. <laughs> what? It's a joke, Dad. Well, this is no joking matter. It's not here, Dad. What isn't there? The monster. Well, of course it wouldn't be there. It wouldn't fit under there. It was huge. Not here either. Well, it wouldn't fit in there either. I tell you, it was huge. Isn't it great? We've got a monster. We've got a possum. What? Dad, it's a possum. It's on the tree next to the house. Oh, Simon, this was not a possum. It had fangs this long. This was Cujo, the killer dog. <laughs> now, it's a possum. It's jumping under the roof. There it goes. Si Simon, that was not a possum. That was a horse. Oh, great. So now we've got Cujo, the killer horse. Probably. <laughs> fangs this long? Yes. And it climbs trees and jumps roofs? Well, it could if it wanted to. Hey, Dad. What? Maybe it's a reindeer and Santa's come early. Oh, <laughs> nobody believes me. I don't believe this. Neither do we. Oh, Dad, calm down. Calm down. My heart rate has gone from a standing point to 
to 420. I mean, I've got enough adrenaline coursing through my body to light a small city, and you say, calm down. Dad, it was a possum. Oh, I'll show you a possum. Dad, where are you going? Look, I've seen a possum. They're cute, cuddly little furry things. This was as big as Farlap. It had, it had fangs this long. Can I come? No, you stay here. Dad, you ate the whole street. I will not. Come on, where are you? Show yourself. <laughs> Did you see it? Yes. And? It was a possum. <laughs> the size of Farlap with fangs this long? Almost. Dad, uh, what we have here is a nice, very cuddly little possum. Can we keep it? No, Jennifer, of course we can't. Oh, rats. Simon, get the ladder. Oh, Dad, don't be crazy. Dad, you're not going to catch that cute, cuddly little possum. No, I'm going to kill that cute, cuddly little possum. Oh, Dad, don't kill the possum! Besides, Dad, they're protected. Yeah, we'll see how well protected he is. Wait till I get within cover driving distance. Dad, I forbid you to kill that possum. Well... Can I stun him? No! Well, how about I frighten him a little? No! no. Dad, you can't go climbing the roof in the middle of the night. Well, the possum's doing it. The possums are supposed to do that. Oh, terrific. He's allowed to do it and I'm not. Well, who pay the rates around here? Do I, does the possum pay them? No, I do. And he's the one that's allowed to run fast and loose all over my roof. I mean, he's protected and I pay the rates. Who protects me? Nobody. It's open season on me. Hey, Dad, I got the possum some bread and milk. Oh, great idea. We'll poison him. What have we got to poison him with? Yeah. We don't have any poison. Oh, terrific. What sort of household is it that doesn't have any poison when you need any? <laughs> right, Mr. Softball Bat? Oh, Dad, calm down. It's ridiculous for a man your age to climb up a dark, slippery roof on a dark night and try and total a possum. And it's too dangerous. <sighs> You're right. You do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, look, I'm sorry we're running dreadfully late, but I'll, I'll get the letter of agreement to you as soon as possible this afternoon. Yes, yes, it's being typed up right now. Yes? <laughs> Yeah, as soon as possible. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Oh, God, what a day. Mm. It's that damn possum's fault that I overslept, and now we're going to have to go like crazy to catch up. Mm. So, I guess the only thing to do is both pitch in and get stuck into it. Heads down, and we'll get through it. And I'll never call you Bucket Brain again. Mm. So, on with the typing. You're a real help to me, Betty. Why can't I hear the typewriter? <laughs> Betty, your feet are falling off. Mm. Betty, your fingers are on fire. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Betty, what's that in your hair? Conditioner. <laughs> hey, bucket brain! <laughs> Yes, yes, you. I'm talking to you. Oh, no. You could not be talking to me. You, you said you'd never call me that again. <laughs> Betty, we have work to do. I know. Well, I... you're not doing it. Well, well I am. I, I'm just going to... You're just sitting there staring under the desk. What have you got under there? Nothing. Yes, you have. Give it to me. Give, 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 give. Mr. Cully, I'm not a sheepdog. <laughs> Betty, give it to me. <laughs> oh, 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 no. The pulsating pampas. <laughs> oh, Betty, you're reading another one of those trashy romance novels. No, I'm not. It's good. It's rubbish. No, it's good. It's all about... I don't want to know. Yes, you do. It's about Jasmine. And poor Jasmine, she's got this terrible trouble. Jasmine? Yeah, she's a hero. Yes. <laughs> she has to make up her mind between Derek and Amanda. Oh, I don't believe this. Yes, because Derek, Derek is, is a dentist and he's steadfast and solid as a rock. But Amanda wants her to go back with him to his huge cattle property in South America and she has to decide. Betty, that's the same book you were reading two weeks ago. It is not so. Well, it is so too. <laughs> well, well, that, that was the tormenting say. Oh, yes, but it was about Jocelyn having to choose between Dirk and Ali and this is Jasmine having to choose between Derek, Derek and Armando. Yeah, yeah, it's the same story. They haven't even changed the initials. Oh, well, <laughs> well I, th I thought I gave you War and Peace to read. Yeah, but... Look, somebody told me that Napoleon lost the war. So what? Well, there's no point in reading it if I know how it ends. Good morning. Martin Kelly Architectural I'm Martin Kelly Art um, Building Drawer. <laughs> Um, just a moment, please. I'll take it in the living room. Why? Because it's impossible to carry on a sensible conversation in here. We really will. He will take you in the living room. Hello. 
Rob Riley? I'm sorry, I don't know any Rob Riley. Ah, you're the possum killer. Uh, I mean, catch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I've got one. Yeah, could you come and kill it for me? Uh, I mean, catch it for me. Yes, yes, I know they're protected. Yes, and I know that they also poop all over your backyard, your driveway and your car. Yeah, that's why I called you. Right, well, okay, well, how much would you charge to come and catch it? What? Well, how much would you charge to come and kill it? <laughs> yes, yes, I know they're protected. Y yes, yes, you did mention that. Everybody mentions that. But, I mean, you can't possibly charge 95 bucks. I mean, I'm not asking you to round up rhinos in the front of the Land Rover. <laughs> well, I was only a possum, for God's sake. If I had a butterfly net in bed with me the other night, I could have caught it myself. Oh. All right, well, that's the way you feel. Forget it. I'll make other arrangements. Who was that, Mr. Kelly? That was Possums Incorporated. They wanted 95 bucks to come and get rid of it. Oh, well, you don't even have to hire one. All, all you have to do yes, is... Yes, I know. That's possum. what I told him. I'll do it myself. Yeah, but see, what you... Hey, Betty, did you know we've got a possum? Oh, yes, I did, dear. Isn't it exciting? I've made a little jacket for him, see? <laughs> oh, isn't that cute? What are you going to do with it? If I have my way, we'll bury him in it. <laughs> okay. Now, I've divided the night up into watches. Who wants first pick? Oh, sorry, Dad. What are you talking about? Neighbourhood possum watch. <laughs> well, I, well, I can't possibly catch him unless I know what his habits are. And how are you planning on catching this possum, Dad? Well, I don't know. Lasso him, I suppose. <laughs> what are you doing? Can I keep him? No, Jennifer, you can't. Look, there's not a lot of point to catching him if you're going to keep him when we do, is there? Well, why can't we just leave him? I think it's nice to have a possum around the house. Because it's not nice to be knee-deep in possum poo every time you walk out the front door. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. They must have digestive systems that never sleep. <laughs> OK, so who's going to have first watch? Uh, sorry, Dad, I'm off to Tiff's. I'll help you, Dad. No, 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 not you. You've got your homework to do and then you're off to bed. Oh, then I want to see the possum. No, you've had too many late nights already this week. Now, off you go. Now, Simon, what time do you want? Sorry, Dad, I'm, I'm going out with Lynn. Oh, Lynn, her again? Yes, her again. What about it? Hey, Simon, calm down. She's only joking. Yeah. You two are becoming a bit of an item, aren't you? Dad, make her stop that. Simon, she's not doing anything. Look, who I go out with is my business. She's a nice girl, OK? Hey, did I say she wasn't? Yeah, calm down. I, know, I agree. I think she's a nice girl, too. Well, so what's the hassle? There's no hassle. It's just that both Deb and I agree she's a nice girl, don't we? Yeah, she's great. Fine, then. It's just that we're not used to seeing you going out with the same girl so often. <laughs> but I don't see what's wrong with that, and I don't see why it's such a big deal. It's no big deal. Fine, then. A bit sensitive, aren't you? I'm not sensitive! <laughs> I'm just going out with a girl I like, okay? Okay. Okay? Okay. Good. I'm going out with Lynn. Yes, again. Yes, I like her, okay? Can I come? No. <laughs> well, I better be going then, too. No, I just a minute. Who's going to help me with Possum Watch? Uh, sorry, Dad. Oh, I'll help you, Mr. Kelly. I've got nothing to do. Been banned from the pizza parlour again. Oh. Well, thanks, Nuts. It's nice to know someone's going to give me a hand. Hungry work, this possum watching, isn't it? <laughs> I've got a possum eating everything outside, you eating everything inside. The house has got white ants, I'm in big trouble. <laughs> Mr. Kelly? It's your watch and you're asleep. No, no, I wasn't asleep. Your eyes were closed. No, no, my eyelids had just slipped down for a second. You were snoring. No, no, I was humming through my nose. <laughs> it's not my fault if I can't carry a tune. No, there's not much point to keeping watch if you're going to fall asleep. Yeah, I was wondering that too. Eh? Well, I mean, if this possum does come out, what are we going to do about it? I hadn't thought of that. I mean, we, we can't say, freeze, possum, or go ahead, make my day. No, I suppose not. I just thought it would be of value to study his movements. You can do that in the driveway outside. You can do it twice in the way. Yeah, well. What you need is a trap. Why don't you hire one? Oh, no, that's a ridiculous. It's a great idea. Yeah. Oh, well, look, I'll, I'll, I've got to get home. I've got some heavy nose humming to do. <laughs> Please, uh, See you, mate. Good night, Nudge. See you, possum. Oh, get <laughs>
<laughs> well, Simon, did you and Lynn have a good time? Yeah. Oh, that's good. As a matter of fact, uh, we're thinking of getting engaged. Oh, that's good. <laughs> engaged. Engaged. As in preparatory to getting married till death us do part, let no man put asunder. Engaged. Yeah. As in diamond ring from Bruce and Walsh valued at over four hundred dollars. Let's go. Looking, let's go looking for a block of land next to you know she's off the pill and we're going to have a baby. Engaged. Yeah. You're kidding. <laughs> All right, I'll take it back. You're crazy. Dad, will you stop shouting and listen to me for a minute? No. Why not? Well, I don't like what I'm hearing. I listened to you a second ago and I thought I heard you say you're getting engaged. I am. You're crazy. You've done that already. Say something other than you're crazy. Well, you say something other than you're getting engaged. Who's getting engaged? He is. You're kidding. No, he's not. He's crazy. Say something else. Hey, Dad, what's all the noise? It's a possum back. No. <laughs> Simon's getting engaged. Oh, rat. I thought it was something good. <laughs> <laughs> Simon, you can't possibly get engaged. You can't afford it. I can't afford it. Have you thought that there's no way in the world you'd be able to support it? Quiet! Yeah, keep it down. I'm trying to sleep. Go to bed. Go to bed. Go to bed. No, Simon, I don't want to discuss this in front of the entire family. All right, all right, Deborah, go to bed. No way, I want to hear this. Go, go to bed. Okay, but I'll be talking to you later. Look, no, hang on, just before you go, did you do any or all of the following? Did you get engaged, married, or join a nunnery? None of the above. Good. Go to bed. No, look, Simon, let's talk about this. Dad, there's not much to talk about. Lynn and I are getting engaged. There's a whole lot to talk about. There's, there's your whole life to talk about, not, not to mention Lynn's life. What's wrong with her? Nothing. You liked her before? Well, I do. She's a nice girl. Then what's the problem? D Simon, there's got to be 1.5 million nice girls out there. What are you going to do, get engaged to them all? No, I'm going to get engaged to Lynn. Why? Well, Dad, you and Mum got married when you were my age. Well, that's different. We've known each other for years. Well, so will Lynn and I when we get married, but we're not planning to get married tomorrow. Oh, well, that's a relief. My suit's at the cleaners. <laughs> if you want to be sarcastic, there's not a lot of point in discussing it. All right, look, Simon, I'm sorry. I don't get this, you know. Now you're shutting the house down. Earlier you said it'd be nice to see me settling down. Yes, but not this settled. And not this down. <laughs> she's not pregnant, is she? No, she's not. Well, why are you doing this? Dad, is that the only reason why people get engaged? No, of course not. Not. Thousands of guys my age get engaged every day. Yes, and if they were here now, I'd ask them the same question. Why are you doing this? If that's all you can think of to say, there's not a lot of point in discussing Look, it. Look, Simon, hang on a minute. You're upset. We'll discuss it later. Well, of course I'm upset. What do you expect? You can't discuss it rationally when you're upset. We'll talk about it in the morning. Things will not change in the morning. <sighs> They're getting nowhere at the moment. <sighs> all right. All right, we'll talk about it in the morning. Hey, Simon, can I be a bridesmaid? Yeah, sure, Kim. <laughs> You're going to be a bridesmaid. No, even better than that, the possum's back and he's got a friend with him. <laughs> Don't tell me. They're getting engaged. <laughs> Hey, Betty, look at this. You'll never guess what I've got. A possum trap. A possum trap. <laughs> what do you know about? Oh, we used to use them in the country. Uh, they, they don't work very well, bud. Aha, uh -huh, but this one will. This is a state-of-the-art bicentennial possum trap. <laughs> Nevertheless, it won't be as good as Grandma. She used to get rid of all our possums and she never used a trap. Oh, what did she use? A 12-gauge. <laughs> This will work. You see, what I've done is you put the apple on the hook and then you set this and then the possum comes along and he jiggles the apple and, and then... nothing happens. <laughs> yeah. oh, you've said it all wrong. Oh, yeah, they're too finicky, no, these things. No, no, no. It's, it's just a matter of adjustment. Well, I could ring Grandma and she could be down tomorrow on the Daylight Express. No, no. <laughs> we don't need Grandma. It's only a possum. Possums are tricky. Oh, Betty, they are not. Look, I mean, there's a huge difference when you compare a possum's brain with my brain or your brain. <laughs> No, just my brain. I'll catch him in there. He'll get out. They're smart. Oh, they're not smart, Betty. The only thing a possum can do is poo. <laughs> and that doesn't take brains. It takes a turbocharged digestive system. That's disgusting. Yeah, I know. Well, those damn things pass their own body weight every 20 minutes. Anyway, that trap will never hold you. Oh, what? He's an escape artist now, is he? Poudini the possum, eh? <laughs> Look, if you insist on using uh, this, uh, I'll just thank you, tell Betty. You thank you very much, Betty. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's my trap, my roof, my possum, and I don't need your advice. After all, it's a city possum, and I am a city architect. <laughs> oh, one of the strings is out of tune. Is it? Yeah, tune it, will you? Oh, are you sure? Or maybe that one could be in, and the other five could be out. Maybe I should tune them. <laughs> oh, Simon, there you are. Oh, hi, Mr. Kelly. 
Hi, Dad. Look, Simon, I don't want to argue with you. I don't want that either. Good. I just want to make five points so you can have a think about them, all right? But we won't discuss them because we'll only end up arguing. Does that sound fair enough to you? Oh, sounds OK to me, Mr Kelly. Oh, sure. <laughs> Simon? OK, Dad. OK. One, I still think you're too young. At your age, I've been working for two years. Two, you should be enjoying yourself at your age and not tying yourself down. Three, there's no way in the world you can support a wife on an assistant greenkeeper's pay. Four, you've got university and your career to think about. And five... What's five, Mr Kelly? Five is my thumb. I forget. <laughs> but that's enough anyway. What on earth was that? It's that damn possum again. But this time, I've really got him. He's a man of action, your dad, isn't he? Yeah. It's a pity you can't understand the way I feel about Len. Oh, well, he can't. No, neither does Deb. You're the only one who does. Well, do I? <laughs> don't you? I don't know. I mean, are you really serious? Yeah. Well, why? Well, it's a bit hard to explain. Is it? No, actually it's not. Oh, well, that's good. You see, since I've been going out with Lynn, she's really come out of her shell. Her family split when she was a kid, you know. Yeah, I heard about that. And she's never had any family life, like anyone or anything to belong to. And now I feel obligated. No! Well, in a way, but that's not the right word. Oh, sound pretty good to me. <laughs> no, 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 there has to be another word to describe it, hasn't there? Oh, I don't know. See if you can think of one. I'm going to tune these other five strings. <laughs> No. Oh, why not? Because I didn't catch him. It's the fourth time he's done that tonight. Done what? Well, he jumps on the trap and he jiggles the apple, poos on the driveway and runs off. <laughs> what happens then? Well, then I go out, I step in the poo and he's up a tree sniggering. <laughs> Love to see that. <laughs> Deborah, it's not funny. Well, it is from where I'm standing, Dad. That's because you're not standing knee-deep in possum droppings. <laughs> Maybe next time we'll leave a note. What note? The phantom Poudini strikes again. Hi, Dad. Oh, hello, stranger. I missed you at breakfast. Yeah, I went for an early walk. I had a bit of thinking to do. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, I've uh, decided to tell Lynn the engagement's off. Thank God. She's a nice girl, you know. I know. But I think it's for the best, don't you? Well, Simon, I hadn't really thought about it. <laughs> But you're probably right. Mm, I'll still see it, though, but the engagement's off. So, which one of my four points finally got through to you? Oh, them. None of them. Oh, good. I just couldn't see where I was. I, I had everything out of perspective. I couldn't see it until Nudge explained it to me. <laughs> Nudge explained it to you? Yeah. Well, see you later, Dad. Nudge explained it to him? <laughs> Nudge explained it to him. <laughs> Morning, Betty. Nudge explained it to him. Betty? Oh, good morning, Mr. Kelly. Betty, why are you wearing a dressing gown? Well, uh, I could hardly come over in the nude, could I? No, but you could wear a deep sea diver's outfit or something appropriate like that. <laughs> Mr. Kelly, I don't wear things like that at three o'clock in the morning. You were here at three o'clock in the morning? Yeah, to set the possum trap. Oh, that thing? It's absolutely useless. I'm getting rid of it. If I waited a hundred years, there's no way in the world I could ever catch a possum in that trap. Hey, Dad, we caught the possum! Jeez, oh, I hate it when that happens. <laughs> All right, Betty, what did you do that was different? Well, I was trying to tell you, you were using the wrong bait. Rubbish! Possums love apples, everyone knows that. Yeah, and if he wants one, he can climb the apple tree next door. He doesn't have to climb into a trap. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very well. I'll grant you that. So, I put a peanut butter and honey sandwich in there. <laughs> when you're a possum, they're pretty hard to come by. <laughs> Nudge explained it to Simon. Now Betty's caught the possum. <laughs> I really hate today.
front of a live audience. Hey Dad is a Gary Riley production for the Australian Television Network. for the Henderson job? Where it should be, Mr. Kelly. Well, it should be in my hand. Just a minute, I'll check again. No, it's definitely not here. <laughs> Here's your coffee, Mr. Kelly. Thank you. My invoice, Betty. Oh, that? It's where I'll fold it. Of course. <laughs> under Pooh Bear. <laughs> under Pooh Bear? Of course, under Pooh Bear. Why did you file it under Pooh Bear? Well, if you recall, Mr. Kelly, Pooh Bear had a friend called Heffalump. Heffalump? Yeah. And Heffalump? Fall down the wall. <laughs> well, go on. <sighs> and land it on top of Piglet. Well, what has that got to do exactly with the Henderson invoice? Really, Mr. Kelly, do I have to spell everything out? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Henderson. He's got B.O. No, he looks like Piglet, see? <laughs> That's why I found him under. Yeah. Yes, of course, under Pooh Bear. Where else would it be? Hey, Dad. Oh, look, it's Christopher Robin. Who's Christopher Robin? It was under Pooh Bear. What? Uh, 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 Mr. For Christopher Rob, uh, someone or others, here to see you. <laughs> hey, Dad, um, you haven't seen my modern motor magazine, have you? Have you looked under Pooh Bear? <laughs> oh, Mr. Kelly. Well, I'm sure I left it in here somewhere. Oh, is this it? Oh, great, you found it. I'm surprised you didn't see it before. Yeah, well, I was trying not to. Uh, Dad? Yes, Simon? Have you ever thought about buying a new car? <laughs> What's wrong with the Volvo this week? Oh, nothing. It's a good car. It's always been a good car ever since it was made. A long, long time ago. <laughs> Easy on the long, long time ago. That's a very sensible car. Oh, yeah, sensible, but it doesn't fit your image. Yeah, and what exactly is my image, Simon? Well, you're an upwardly mobile, trendy, creative... Uh... Middle-aged, single parent. Betty. <laughs> Dad, you need something stylish, something like... Uh... Oh, look, isn't that a coincidence? Mendacity Motors are having a sale on Mazda RX-7s. Oh. Or, or Stan could get you a really good Valiant Ute uh, fitted with a, a 327 cubic inch supercharged Chevy V8 donk. Donk? Yeah, that's what I've got for engine. <laughs> and and it, it's, it's got heaps of grunt. Oh, damn it, Mazda RX-7 is more you. More me. Yeah, well, I mean, after all, Mr Kelly, you are a goopy. <laughs> I know I'm going to regret asking this, Betty. What is a goopy? Why, a getting older urban professional person. <laughs> Fine. Then we're all here. Goopy, Loopy and Leadfoot. <laughs> right. I have made a decision. This conversation is now ended. But, Dad? Yes, Simon. Well, it's just that... Um... Oh, come on. Get to the point. Give me one good reason why I need a new car. Well, it's really embarrassing taking girls out in the Volvo. <laughs> oh, I see. You want something fast, racy and low slung. Yeah, now you got the idea, Dad. Fine, I'll buy you a skateboard. <laughs> hi, Dad. Oh, hi, Dad. <laughs> Deborah? Mr. Oh, it is you. For a minute there, I thought you'd got caught in the rain and shrunk. <laughs> Or is this the latest fashion from the House of Attack? New Wave Darrow. Dad, don't be silly. Me? Silly? You're the one wearing Russ Hins's old suit. Dad, they're not my clothes. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. They're Zoltan's. Right. Zoltan? Who's Zoltan? It's a long story, Dad. Yeah, so is War and Peace. Who's Zoltan? Well, if you really must know, I met him this afternoon. 
What, you stole his clothes? What's he wearing now? Dad, stop being silly. Sorry. It's rather beautiful, actually. I was just walking home when this gold Porsche came screaming round the corner and drove straight through this muddy puddle and drenched me. And the driver got out and... This is, uh, Zoltan. Yeah. Zoltan O'Toole. Uh-huh. And he offered to take me up to his flat. His, his flat? You went into the flat of a stranger named Zoltan O'Toole? Dad, he was a perfect gentleman. He sat me down and made me a cappuccino and gave me something to wear while he organised for my clothes to be dry cleaned. Dry cleaned? What happened to good old washing? Oh, it was so wonderful sitting there warm and cosy with Ravel's bolero playing in the background. Oh, mature men are so considerate. Just how mature is this laundry Lothario? Oh, just average age. How average? 30-ish. <laughs> How much ish? You know, 30-ish can get pretty close to 40-ish. Dad, I'm a big girl now. You're 17-ish. Well, that's close to 18-ish. <laughs> anyway, Dad, we're going out to dinner tonight at the Hilton. Oh, yeah? This bandit must have lots of dough. What's he do for a living? I'm not quite sure. Something to do with consulting and importing. And he's involved with television as well. Yeah, what as? A regular on the investigators. <laughs> He does. It's the person inside that counts. But, Deborah, you hardly even know this man. Oh, honestly, Dad, you're so unromantic sometimes. I mean, haven't you ever heard of love at first sight? There, how's that, Betty? Oh, uh, yeah, that looks all right. Maybe a little bit more of the left. Oh, hang on a minute, Jenny. I happen to work here. Well, sorry, Dad. Just following orders. Yeah, but you can't leave it here. Besides, the desk slopes. I mean, what would happen if I water it? Laugh at you. Yeah. That's right, because they get water everywhere. No, because it's plastic. Oh. Oh, phew. Come on, Jenny, get rid of it. This area's off limits. Now, Jennifer, where are we going to find a moose head? Try looking on the top of your neck. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Listen, what are you two doing anyway? Redecorating. Why? Well, your daughter and I are very concerned with your image, Mr. Oh, Kelly. Oh, not that again. Yes, first impressions are extremely important. You don't want your clients to think that you work in a boring old office like this, Julia. But I do work in a boring old office like this. <laughs> What's wrong with it? Well, you know, it's a little bit... <laughs> what do you mean, a bit... <laughs> you know, a bit... <laughs> no, I don't know what you mean by... <laughs> How can I put this so you understand? Well, try putting it in English for a start. <laughs> well, uh, how can I do that? It's Italian. So, did I miss the bus here or something? What's Italian? The design in this magazine. <gasps> I'll get it! Yeah, you see, very soon this will all look like part of the palace of Count Ronaldo Agostini of Calabria. What, he's studying? No, he's bathroom. <laughs> you know, I didn't have a picture of his studying. Betty, whatever you have, I hope it isn't contagious. It's here! It's here! Oh, What's oh. here? What's here? I'll be there in a sec. Hang on a sec. Oh, Mr Kelly, now close your eyes. We've got a surprise for you. What sort of surprise? Just a little something that will turn this office into the Arc de Triumph of interior decorating. Now, are you going to close your eyes? Yeah, well, I suppose I better. I can't bear to look. <laughs> Speechless. See, I knew we'd love it. No, my power of speech has just returned. Get rid of it. What's that to What's that to me? This bunch of grapes. Ah, uh, don't you look at that. Oh, why not? Because nice girls shouldn't know what's under those grapes. Well, I'll ask Debbie then. She'll know. <laughs> Jenny, leave it alone. I like it the way it is. Well, I'm just trying to help. I only want you to look nice for Zoltan. Oh, I'll throw a bucket of mud over it. He likes him like that. <laughs> well, well, where is he? I want to see this bloke Zoltan. I thought he'd be here by now. Well, he's not due for another 15 minutes. Oh, well, whenever I take a girl out, I like to get there at least half an hour early. Well, just to be polite. Uh, just to make sure they don't change their mind and try to sneak out. <laughs> Get the door. No, no, I'll get the door. No, I'll get the door. No, you get the door. I'll wait in the kitchen. Well, I'll get it. Every 
everybody just act natural. <laughs> I haven't missed him. Dad! Jeez, a spitting image of Mr. Kelly. That's because it is Mr. Kelly, Nudge. Oh, well, I don't know. I saw this show once where this guy had a double. Nudge. And he went... Yeah? Go home. Hey, hey, it is Mr. Kelly. Oh, <laughs> uh, you can come out now, Deb. Darling. <laughs> darling. Darling, Dad, what are you doing here? I live here, darling. I just, I just forgot my keys. A friend of yours? Not mine. Oh, that's all we need. Roger Revit and the retreads next door. <laughs> well, give it a rest, you hoons. <laughs> oh. Hello. Uh, yes, yes, she's here. It's for you. Hello. Oh, hi, Zoltan. Well, I think it's Zoltan. Maybe it's Darling. <laughs> Hello. Outside. On the car phone. Car phone? Shh. Did we hear what? Bad. Yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> okay, I'll see you in a sec. Bye. Hang on, Deborah. Am I to assume that Zoltan, your Zoltan, is outside the house blowing his horn and speaking to you on his car phone? Yeah, he just got it today, Dad. What? His personality? <laughs> his car phone? But, uh, hang on, is, isn't he going to come inside? Well, Dad, look, there's not really much time. We're in a bit of a hurry. Oh, no, hang on, Deborah. You're always doing this to me. I never get to meet your boyfriends. I mean, they sit out there going, da 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 and you say, see you later, Dad, bye, and you run out. I want to meet him. Well, you can meet him next time. See you later, Dad, bye. Bye. Freeze! OK. All together on the count of three. One, two, three. <laughs> Do you think it should be all right, Dad? I'll never trust her again. 2.30. Oh, maybe I should call the hospital. No, I'll call the police. No, I know what I'll do. I'll call Robbo. He knows everything. <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> oh, hi, Deb. Dad, what are you doing up? Oh, well, I was... You don't uh... trust me, do you? Yes, yes, of course I trust you. Well, then why are you waiting up for me? Well, uh, I'm not. I'm, I'm watching a movie on television. <laughs> Dad, there's nothing on that. It's just snow. Oh, no, no, that, that's the movie. See, Scott of the Antarctic. This is the blizzard scene. <laughs> Oates has just said he's going to pop out for a packet of woodbine. He'll be back shortly. OK, how did it go? Well, it was great. We went out to dinner and then went to a nightclub and then back to Zoltan's for coffee. Coffee? Yeah, coffee. What sort of coffee? <laughs> no, don't know. Nescafe, bushels, why? Well, gee, I don't know how to put this, Deb. You see... Sometimes when a man asks a woman to his flat for coffee, he doesn't always mean coffee, you know. Sometimes he can mean... coffee. What? Well, you see, coffee can have two meanings. Can it? Yeah, yeah. You see, one can mean a hot beverage. Or? Or it can mean... Uh... I think it's time for bed, Dad. Precisely. <laughs> a hot beverage oh that's a relief thank god oh uh, it, deb it's not that i, that uh, I don't dad, trust I you. appreciate I... the fact that you worry about me but believe me i know what i'm doing i know i know but i don't know what zoltan's doing <laughs> well, i haven't even met the man well you will tomorrow night he's taking me out to the the launch of george michael's new single oh what's it called i want your coffee <laughs> huh? after dinner we went on to perversity for cocktails What's perversity? It's a private nightclub, Jen. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> well, I'd love to go there. How do you get in? Well, Zoltan's a VIP member. It's amazing how many people he knows. Anyway, well, we just sat at the bar and gazed into each other's eyes and drank fluffy ducks all night. <gasps> you drank poor little fluffy ducks? <laughs> I mean, didn't the feathers on their bum tickle your nose? Know? <laughs> Betty, they're not real ducks. We're talking about the name of a drink. Oh, you mean like hairy dogs? <laughs> yeah, like, like, like Stan has the day after he gets a bit, you know. Get out of it, you mongrel! <laughs> I mean, they always look like beers to me, but he calls them hairy dogs. Oh, yuck! I remember the first time Stan took me out. It was the day of the Walgett show, and I took Cyril down to the obedience trolls. <laughs> Cyril? 
Yeah, my pig dog. <laughs> Stan was one of the judges and he came out to do some judging and Cyril took one look at him with his little piggy eyes and, and goad him. Ooh, poor Stan. Yeah, well, there was a real gentleman about it. Who, Cyril? No, Stan. <laughs> he, he was so polite, he kept chatting and smiling and muttering little things under his breath and then he limped down to the hospital. Because Cyril had bitten him? No, because Cyril was still clamped onto his leg. <laughs> Was he all right? Oh, yeah, he was happy as Larry. His little piggy eyes were shut tight and, and his jaws were locked solid on Stan's calf. No, I meant Stan. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they prized Cyril off with a crowbar and a pair of stool <laughs> and, and then they bathed the wound in dead off. Ooh. Yeah, that's what Stan said in that You mean, and he still asked you out after all that? Oh, yeah, Mr Kelly, true love knows no pain. Well, a bitch. <laughs> but then we all went back to showground and Stan brought Cyril and I a steak sandwich each and a, a bottle of creaming soda. Oh, that's very romantic, Betty. And tell me, Deb, what are you going to wear tonight? Oh, don't tell me Zoltan's asked for his clothing back. Ha-ha, Dad. No, I'm going to go into the city and buy something really special. Anyway, I better be going. Bye, girls. Bye, Deb. Bye. <laughs> oh, isn't this exciting, Mr Kelly? <gasps> I feel like a hot cuppa. Would you like a coffee? Don't be disgusting, Betty. <laughs> Simon, why do you always leave bits of food on the fork when you do the washing up? Oh, it's a great Australian tradition. It's the way a man washes up. <laughs> oh, so that's why you've left a big lump of gravy on this plate, is it? Oh, give me a look. There. Dad's going to have to buy a dishwasher. Why? It's not you. Hi, oh, Simon. Hi, Jenny. What's wrong with Nudge? Why? He just walks straight to the kitchen without eating anything. You're right. This could be serious. Hey, what's up, Nudge? Nothing. Can I get you something to eat, Nudge? Oh, no, thanks. See, I told you, Simon, quit calling an ambulance. <laughs> I've just seen the most disgusting thing I have ever seen in my whole life. Go on. What happened? Oh, well, it was this man and this woman. Uh, Jenny, I think I can hear Dad calling you. I can't. Go on, Nudge. <laughs> oh, it was revolting. They were all over each other. She was tall with long black hair and... He was running his fingers through it. Oh, and they were kissing and smooching. It was like mud wrestling without the mud. Wow. Oh, go on, go on. Yeah, well, I had to crawl under the hedge and kneel in the stormwater drain next to the car park to get a real good look at them. <laughs> oh, it was like Siamese twins joined at the tongue. Yeah. Uh, Jenny, I'm sure I can hear Dad calling you. Oh, grow up, Simon. <laughs> so what happened then, Nudge? Oh, well, they drove off in this gold Porsche. Like Zoltans? Yeah, with personalised number plates. Like Zoltans? Yeah, and a car horn that went... <laughs> Zoltans! <laughs> uh, no, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. You're absolutely sure, absolutely sure. Well, what other sharks considered sleazeball would have personalised number plates that read big bucks? <laughs> and that's bucks with a Z. Yeah, and a car horn that goes... <laughs> Just give me five minutes with him, Dad. That's all I need. No one messes with my sister. You mess with other people's sisters, Simon. <laughs> That's different. This time, it's my sister. All right, now calm down, calm down. Violence never solved anything. But, Dad, Nudge just said... I know what Nudge said. What did Nudge say? Oh, uh, uh, uh nothing. No, he was just saying, uh, how nice you look tonight. Oh, was I? Yeah, 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 you were. All right. Well, thank you, Nudge. So, um, what time is Zoltan going to pick you up? In about ten minutes. <laughs> Come on, Nudge. Jenny's going to show us her karate. Yeah. <laughs> Look, Deb, I'm sure it's a very good reason for him being late. Dad, he's not just late. He's an hour and a half late. Yeah, right. Look, Deb, there's something I should tell you. Nudge saw Zoltan in the golf club car park today. Did he? Yes, with, uh, with a friend. So? Well, it was a very good friend, a female friend. Oh, the tall blackhead. Yeah. How did you know? Well, I saw them today, too. They were carrying on in the doona department at Kmart. I mean, it's the most disgusting thing I've ever seen in my life. I had to climb over this huge pile of Dickie's towels to get a good look at them. <laughs> they, they should be allowed to carry on like that in plain view of everyone. What, and you're still going to go out with him? Well, I just bought my new dress. I mean, I wasn't going to waste it. <laughs> Hello. Yes, I'll just see if she's in. Tim, what'll I do? It's all right, I'll get it. Darling! No, 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 that's all right. Look, no, I understand. I can't see him anywhere. He must have parked around the corner. No, 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 actually, I was just on my way out. That's right, raging. Yes, 
Well, do you want to meet somewhere then? Where? Well, how about the Carby Bar at the Earl of Critchfield Hotel? You don't know it? Well, it's in the book. Okay, bye bye, darling. Yeah, me too. Deb, the Earl of Critchfield Hotel, you can't go there. That's a bikey's hangout. Is it? Yes, I mean, that, that's got to be the roughest pub in the world. Those guys bite the heads off V8 engines. <laughs> Do they? Yeah. Right. Simon, Nudge. Yeah? Come on, we're going out. Where? Uh, just opposite the Earl of Critchfield Hotel. We well, are kidding. No, no, it's all right. I have a feeling there's going to be a big show on there tonight. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Kelly. Good morning, Nudge. Oh, what are you going to do with that? I'm getting rid of it. What a nice statue of Simon like that. <laughs> Nudge, that's David. Oh, pleased to meet you, David. <laughs> David who? A very good question. Listen, Nudge, if you like it so much, you might as well keep it. Oh, can I, Mr. Kelly? Just thanks a lot. Oh, it looked great with my other statues. Other statues? Gee, Nudge, I didn't realise you were a connoisseur of fine art. Oh, I'm not, Mr. Kelly. I like art. Oh, the form, the structure, and it really impresses the girls. Yeah. I think I'll put David between Sleepy and Grumpy. Yeah. With a beanie on his head, no one will ever know the difference. Morning, oh, morning, Simon, Deborah. Nice to see you back in the land of the living. Oh, by the way, Michelangelo here hasn't told me how it went last night. How'd it go? Oh, it was very funny, Dad. Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> Dad, you've never seen anything like it. Zoltan, shark skin suit and all, came flying out of this bar, being chased by this huge mob of bikies chanting, Fluffy Duck! Fluffy Duck! <laughs> it was unreal, Dad. He should be in the Olympics. He hurled a row of Harleys. He jumped into his Porsche. He slammed it into gear and gave the finger to the bikers as he dropped the clutch. Big mistake. Yeah, big, big mistake. Why? Well, they put the Porsche up on bricks. <laughs> Oh, I hope he was all right. Well, he seemed to be. I mean, the bikers were pretty friendly about it. They just moved their party outside around the car and put a keg on the bonnet and passed him fluffy ducks through the sunroof. Oh, well, that was nice of them. <laughs> well, not really, Dad. Why? They were using real ducks. <laughs> <laughs> The show is recorded in front of a live audience. Hey Dad is a Gary Riley production for the Australian Television Network.